Hello and um, good evening everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, we seem to be a little bit fated with clashing with the events. We had um, Tom Verdon's talk in the cathedral last, last Tuesday when England were playing and this talk this evening. Um, um, thank you very much for your joining us. I know a lot of you here tonight are kind of regular Zoomers, so you you know the format. Um, if you could keep yourself on mute during the talk, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm going to pass over to Bruce in a minute for some introductions, who will then um, pass over to Tom for his um, talk. Um, there will be a chance for some questions at the end. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to dive off to do some complicated logistics um, retrieving my children from various places um, but um, Tom and Bruce will, will manage the Q&As um, and uh, just a little bit of um, publicity I think you all know that we've got our AGM on Saturday um, not quite in our festival day not quite the day we had planned but we are um, we've got our AGM on Zoom at 11 a.m. Um, the reason we've done that early on is that it um, hopefully if you want to come to do the zoom at home um, and then you've got time to head down to Winchester um, to maybe meet some friends in the refectory or have some time in Winchester before the, um, the service at um, 4.30. Um, so we really look forward to welcoming you to the service. Um, if you don't want to come to Winchester or if it's too far it will be on the cathedral live stream so we very much um welcome you um, through that as well. Um, anyway, I think that's all from me and I will pass over to Bruce now. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. And it gives me really the greatest pleasure to, to introduce uh, Tom to you. I mean, probably most of you know him anyway. Uh, uh, Tom was Professor of Public Relations at Bournemouth for, for many years. Uh, he's, he's a very accomplished academic in, in, in many, many ways. I mean, he's got a PhD. He's recently done a, a master's degree at, at, at Winchester. Uh, moving on from public relations, really, he's, he's a, a historian and he's been invaluable in, in, in terms of being a trustee of the Friends, which he is, uh, in, in, in backing all we do in terms of, uh, of history and, and, and historical things. Uh, he, he's taken the, uh, the the load off off us, if you like, with the 90th anniversary because he's picked picked the ball up and run with it, and so almost everything that that we're doing uh, this weekend uh, and we've been doing for the year uh, about the 90th anniversary of, of the Friends is, is down to Tom. Uh, he knows anybody who wants to know anything about uh, the, the friends of Winchester Cathedral over the last 90 years needs to ask Tom. So anyway, that, that's, that's enough from me for the moment. Um, uh, Tom, Tom is, by the way, the deputy uh, chairman. He, he, and I, it, I, I've been working with him as a trustee uh, ever since, I think, 2011. And it is, uh, he's been a wonderful person to work with. So over to you, Tom. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Right. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. If not, wave, wave frantically. Um, this, this is a, a different type of his, history uh, talk. And I was just thinking, well, just before I sort of launch into it, is that in some ways it, it's the, the nicest type of history because it's the history of us. And it's the history of how we are, um, how the, how the organisation has developed, and the, the personality of it, which is embodied in, in all of us. So, you know, it's only, it's a really only eight days to go to the actual anniversary of the Friends, uh, our, our 90th anniversary. And we had hoped as to welcome members to the AGM, but that's, and the afternoon tea and everything, but that's all been put on hold. Um, before I actually give you, make the presentation, um, which tells the sort of when, who, when, how, and who of the formation of the Friends in 1931. I'd like to give some thanks in advance. And first to our cathedral archivist, David Rymel, who was given so freely of his great knowledge of the cathedral and diocesan archives. Um, it's absolutely invaluable. Second to my fellow trustees, who last year agreed to the development of our own online archive, which you can view at wincathrecord.org. And I'll 
talk a little more about that as we go through. The trustees have also, as Bruce said, supported our thwarted plans for a, a grand 90th anniversary. So my presentation will be around 25 minutes. Uh, after questions, we'd also you know, like to hear some of your memories of the Friends over the years. You know, after all, we've been around a long time. Right, now, let's get on with the show. Uh -oh. Right. Let me set the scene and start by saying that Cathedral Friends Associations are a really important social movement, which in England um, is nationwide. And of course, there are friends of everything now, but in the late 1920s and early 1930s, it was a new idea. Even in the history of the Church of England, let alone wider social history, the story of the Cathedral Friends Associations is a very underreported success story. As far as I can see from extensive reading, there is only one English academic who's researched the topic. Many obscure religious and political groups have had more research and articles. Yet by the turn of the 2000s, there were 55,000 people in membership of Cathedral Friends Associations in England. And as we know, here in Winchester, the Friends are still going strong, along with 42 other Cathedral Friends groups. So tonight's presentation has four elements. We'll first look at the context of the Church of England in the 1920s and at Winchester in 1931, the year when we started. Then we'll consider how our Friends organization came into being and what it did in the first 18 months. I'll start by setting up the context. At the end of World War I, the Church of England was in a poor state. For many, its pulpits had be been seen as recruiting platforms during the war, and this was greatly resented. Roger Lloyd, once a canon at the cathedral in the 1960s, wrote in his history of the church that it had lost its way. To quote him, there was no vision or general sense of purpose and direction. Nationally, the vast loss of life in the Great War was followed by even greater civilian casualties from the so-called Spanish flu pandemic. From late 1918, until the early 1920s, the period was known as the Great Silence, in which grief piled upon grief. Most cathedrals did not welcome visitors and were seen as remote from both the people and other churches in their diocese. Winchester in particular had a reputation for being a grim place to visit. Visitors were barely tolerated. They weren't welcomed. However, that's good news. Around 1923, Dean Frank Barrett of Chester quite literally opened the doors of Chester Cathedral, ended entry payments, and welcomed visitors as pilgrims. His actions proved to be very successful and transformed the attitudes of many deans and chapters. Progress came quickly with several cathedrals soon replacing the six pence entry payment with requests for what were called voluntary pilgrim's gifts. Salisbury, our neighbor, had made very similar changes to Chester at the same time, although these are less well known. While in Winchester, Dean William Hutton ended Winchester's entry fee in 1925. Many cathedrals, adopted this approach and visitors numbers rose as did the income. Some deans also took note of friends organizations which had been established at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge before World War I and more recently at the Bodleian in Oxford in 1925. Thus it was in 1927 that Dean George Bell of Canterbury who's pictured here started the first Cathedral Friends Association and set the whole movement in motion. Bell had visited Chester and looked at the museum's Friends model before launching the Canterbury Group. Now, the Canterbury model 
was the one which was the most widely emulated in the 1920s and 1930s. Its object, and I've marked it in yellow on this slide, was to gather around the cathedral in association with the Dean and chapter, a body of supporters who were prepared to take some share in caring for it and preserving it for posterity. Words to that effect have been used ever since by most friends associations. There was a three tier subscription model of individuals paying a minimum of five shillings a year, corporate bodies such as schools paid 10 shillings and life members gave 20 pounds. And this struck this three tier structure and the amounts were universal well into the 1940s. The association at Canterbury and, and others also had a hierarchic model where the member of the royal family as patron or sometimes called first friend. Uh, the bishop was the president, the dean was the chairman, and there was a council of the counties great and good, usually including the Lord Lieutenant. Now, Dean Bell launched the Canterbury Friends through a letter to the establishments and the church's favorite newspaper, The Times, and it prospered quickly with membership rising rapidly. So Canterbury was the one to look at. It was, Canterbury was followed in the same year by Peterborough, then York in 1928, by Exeter and Portsmouth in 1929, and four other cathedrals in 1930. Now among these, Portsmouth was an outlier. Uh, it was different. First, it had just been formed as a diocese, as a see, in 1927 from part of the Winchester Diocese. And second, it organized its friends group on a diocese-wide basis on a much lower individual subscription of one shilling. The other, the other cathedrals either followed Canterbury to the letter or were very similar. Thus, by the end of 1930, nine friends associations had been formed by English cathedrals. Now, before we look at the formation of our cathedral's friends, let's consider Winchester in 1931. Not only is there economic and employment data, but very handily, it was a census year, which gives greater insight. The, the Winchester city and district populations were about half the size of our time and had declined slightly since the previous post-war census of 1921, largely because um, army camps had been broken down and uh, the military had moved away. However, housing numbers had written, risen strongly because of the expansion of social housing, particularly in Lower Stanmore, which was often seen as a uh, a reference point for social housing in England. This meant that housing in Winchester was less crowded and therefore people were healthier. Now, Winchester High Street, as shown in this 1931 postcard, had attracted new multiple stores with Woolworths coming to the city four years earlier. I think Woolworths is now uh, what, what, what was Woolworths is now where Tesco is in the high street. 1931 as a year was almost the bottom of the Great Depression in the south of England. The city's unemployment was 7.3% compared with the English national level of 13.8% uh, and across the whole of the UK in 1931 the uh, unemployment level was around one in five people. It just uh, around 21%. Um, it was mu much higher in industrial regions of Wales, Scotland and the North. However, it was relatively prosperous here and the South recovered quickly to enjoy a consumer boom between 1934 and 1937. Now, the lead up to the launch of our wonderful Friends Association is, is not well known. 
mainly because there was very little evidence of priming of the pump. Dean Hutton had died in autumn 1930, and he was succeeded by Edward Gordon Selwyn, who is pictured here. This is a, a much picture of him much later in life, which is in the Pilgrim School. He was succeeded by Dean Selwyn, who was installed on New Year's Day 1931. Uh, Dean Selwyn was a leading Anglo-Catholic thinker and writer and came to Winchester from St. John the Baptist Church at Red Hill near Rowlands Castle in the east of the county. Although his church was latterly in the new Portsmouth Diocese, formed in 1927, he was well known in the Winchester Diocese. But as July 1931 started, 90 years ago, there was no hint of a Friends of Winchester Cathedral being launched until the 11th of July edition of the Hampshire Chronicle, which included the cathedral's weekly notice about its services. And in this case, it was the St. Swithin's Day services, in which included the annual festival service, which had been instituted by uh, Dean Hutton. The Chronicle, was then published on Saturdays. So this was very late notice. The 11th of July, telling us about a meeting to be held on the 15th of July. Now, here's the first news in, in the exact text of the cathedral's notice in the Hampshire Chronicle, which I've highlighted in yellow. And I'll read it. Tea will be followed at once by a short meeting to be addressed by Sir William Portal, but on the subject of the Friends of Winchester Cathedral. And he will be supported by the mayor, the headmaster of Winchester College, and Professor Gledo, or Gledo. It is hoped that as many as possible will stay. Sir William uh, Portal was the deputy lieutenant of Hampshire and a considerable man of Hampshire. Professor Gledo, was also on the Winchester College staff. There was no email then, and thus those wishing to attend were asked to send a postcard to the Dean's secretary, and tea was to be offered at one shilling a head. So the post must have been pretty good then. Now, on the day, well, 15th of July, St. Swithin's Day, but Rainsford on St. Swithin's Day, it will rain for 40 days. Well, it poured, absolutely threw down. And the meeting was moved from uh, a marquee on the Mirabel lawn to the Guildhall in Winchester. Sir William Portal, who is pictured here, fulsomely proposed the formation of the Friends of Winchester Cathedral, supported by the mayor, the college headmasters, and others on the stage. The meeting, quite rightly, unanimously supported the proposal and 120 members immediately signed up into the membership of the newborn friends. And it's quite interesting that in reading Sir William's address to the meeting, he made very strong reference to the example of Canterbury as the model that was going to be used. Um, and there was also a letter from the bishop read to the meeting saying, well, if Canterbury's got it, we can't be left behind, can we? So the Bishop uh, Woods was fully in support as well. And here is the uh, screen grab. It's a bit gray, I, I hope you can see it. Um, this is the grab of the Hampshire Chronicles report um, of the ne its next edition on the 18th of July, 1931, which was about the St. Swithin's Day Festival service. And in a secondary headline, it reads, Friends of Cathedral Association Formed. So if it was written in the Hampshire Chronicle, it must have happened. There was also detailed reporting on the festival service, which has guided the preparation of Saturday's, this coming Saturday's Friends Festival Evensong. We are going back to 1931. Uh, by the way, as, as mentioned earlier, you're welcome to attend the socially distanced Evensong in the cathedral or watch it on live stream. And I must also add that the cathedral's excellent new broadcast equipment has been funded by the Friends. Now, how long, how long was this in planning? Um, even though the decision to start the Friends was made at lightning speed for a cathedral, I'd assume, 
Dean, Dean uh, Selwyn starts the 1st of January, the 15th of July, there's a new Friends Association formed. That's lightning speed in the cathedral. However, it's not documented in cathedral and diocesan archives. And this is why I thank David Rymel for all his help in piloting my way through it. Obviously, the cathedral, the Canterbury Friends model had been well publicized in the Times and in the church press. And other cathedrals, major and minor, had started these associations, including, as I mentioned, nearby Salisbury and Portsmouth. So the Friends model was, was well known. However, there was no mention of the meeting to launch the Friends, even in the monthly Winchester Diocesan Chronicle for July 1931 or any previous months. Usually the cathedral listed its services and major events there. There is, however, just one snippet from a letter from the cathedral architect, Tom Atkinson, to the new dean, to the new dean, Dean Selwyn, in February 1931, which mentions that, and I quote, a fund such as Friends of Winchester Cathedral would be extremely useful for repairs which the architect had listed. Now, had the dean told Atkinson about his plans, was Atkinson suggesting it to the Dean? We will never know. And the letter from Atkinson was very much that which the Dean probably said to him, well, tell me what needs to be done in the same way as he would have asked other leading people within the, the, the cathedral organization. So it's a bit of a mystery. How did, who told, whose idea was it? However, it was off and running. Once the idea had got going, um, and the dean must have, the dean actually must have put a lot of thought into it, uh, and he certainly had heavyweight citizens to propose it. So over this, everyone it was quiet over the summer. Uh, by September, the Duke of Connaught, the Queen Victoria's third son, had accepted the patron role. He was closely connected with Hampshire, uh, and also with um, the King's Rifles. Sadly. Sir William Portal died in the same month of September 1931. And in the first Winchester Cathedral record in 1932, he was commemorated as the founder of the Friends among his many accomplishments. By October, Mrs. Ethel Cruikshank had been appointed as the honorary secretary, although it's not at all clear how long she served. Uh, in November uh, 1931, Dean Selwyn launched the Friends of Winchester Cathedral nationally through a letter to the Times and to other newspapers. <clears throat> By the first quarter of 1932, there were 500, over 500 members of the Friends. And the Dean had set up a massive council of some 43 members, including eight, eight women. Um, we don't have that with the trustees of the Friends now. Uh, as well, Lantern Talks, very much like this one, had started in February 1932, and the Friends had moved into an office room in Church House, which is now what we call Number Nine, The Close. So they were full steam ahead. And here's, and this is the photograph that appeared of the Cathedral in the Times of the 14th of November, 1931, which accompanied Dean Selwyn's letter. It was taken from the Tower of Winchester College by a Times photographer. Now, even Canterbury didn't have a similar photo to accomplish its launch in 1927. And I haven't found any cathedral friends other than ours, which was so prominently publicized at its national media launch. And many thanks to uh, Chairman Bruce for obtaining this edition of the Times and sharing this photo of the key page. Now, what was the aim of our friends? Very similar to Canterbury, but I think they're better. And this, this is taken from the very first membership brochure published by the friends uh, around the end of 1931. And it's, it's, I think they're wider and more welcoming than Canterbury and others. I like that we not only bind together all those who love Winchester Cathedral, but we also want to attract and welcome others to join us. 
or as the text says, to bring others as far as possible to appreciate and enjoy it. And our second aim is the prosaic and important one, to help Dean and Chapter to do what is needed to preserve it for posterity, with its beauties unimpaired and, if possible, enriched. There's a real balance in this, these aims between the social benefits of membership and outreach to others, with the purpose of raising funds and giving support to the cathedral. And I think we, we still encompass all those virtues. Now, we're also part of another story of the 1930s, um, which has been uh, picked up recently in Tracy Chevalier's book, A Single Thread, which is the story of the broderers, the embroiderers. From the beginning, the friends supported the broderers. Indeed, the broderers' founders, Louisa Pestle and Sybil Blunt, were on the stage at the Guildhall when the friends were launched. They were there to talk about their plans, which came to fruition in October the same year. One of the, the friend's first gifts, in fact, I think it is the first gift, was for 100 pounds to the broderers in November, 1931. That was roughly equivalent to a modern day four and a half thousand pounds. And our office was shared free of charge with the needlework volunteers on a scheduled basis for several years. Indeed, the broderers spent more time in it than the friends. So the work of the broderers was supported by the friends from the very beginning. Early projects funded by the friends, in addition to the broderers, included repairs to what was then called St. Swithin's Gate and is now the Prior's Gate. Uh, and we helped repair that and its coat of arms. We also helped move the, the movement of medieval statuary, which had been stored in the crypt for many years, into the cathedral. And soon after, uh, in autumn 1932, funds were allocated to help exterminate death watch beetle in the north and south transept roof beams. Unfortunately, we can't take you on a tour to see those, but it did work. Later this year, there will be some funded by friends tours in the cathedral to see some of the headline projects that have been aided in subsequent decades. And we estimate that the Friends have given the equivalent of 12.5 million pounds to the cathedral in the past 90 years. Now we had hoped to run these tours on Saturday, but rules and groups have thwarted them. Another initiative uh, of the Friends was the publication of the annual Winchester Cathedral Record which was edited for the first three years by Canon Goodman, who was a co-librarian at the cathedral and a considerable historian himself. It was priced for non-members at six pence and published locally by Warrens. And that's a photograph of the cover of edition number one. Um, <coughs> so, and that first edition came out in June, 1932 not a year since the foundation meeting in the Guildhall. And we are still publishing the record annually. And you can see an archive of all 89 editions at wincathrecord.org. So it was ever onward. Uh, rapid progress was made in Winchester where there were more than 1000 members listed in the first register of members published in the third edition of the record in early 1934. Unlike modern data protection rules, the members' names and full addresses were published. It was a very different world then. By 1939, there were 28 Cathedral Friends Associations in England. And as I mentioned earlier, there are now 43 in total. Around 2000, our former Dean, Trevor Beeson, estimated that 55,000 people were members of Cathedral Friends groups. And as well as our own 90th anniversary, we should say happy birthday to the Friends of Worcester Cathedral, who also started in 1931. So in conclusion, um, we really should celebrate our achievement of being 90 years strong with nearly 3000 members and ever ready to support the Cathedral after this awful period of pandemic. We also must look back and thank 
Dean Bennett of Chester for opening up cathedrals, Dean Bell of Canterbury for starting the first Cathedral Friends Associations, and our local heroes, Dean Selwyn and Sir William Portal for starting the Friends of Winchester Cathedral in the midst of the Great Depression. I'm sure we all agree that the idea has proven to be a good one. Now, in finishing, just to say thanks to lots of people for photographs. Um, some of them are people known to you, John Crook, Bruce Parker, Simon Newman. Um, I'd also like to thank a group you may not know of. It's the Winchester Memories Group on Facebook, uh, particularly Mike Pettigrew and William Sclater, who helped me source some of the postcard images that I've used throughout the presentation. So if you haven't looked at the Friends Online Archive, can I recommend it to you? Uh, we believe it's the only one offered by any English Cathedral Friends Association, and it's extensively used by cathedral guides and other researchers. There is a note on the site about how to navigate it, and its operation seems to have settled down very well after it was launched last year. You can find a, a longer version of this presentation in an article in the May 21 edition of Record Extra. Um, and I hope that might spur you to read it more. So thanks for listening. Um, and I'll pass over to Bruce for questions and discussion. Thank you so much, Tom. That was uh, that was wonderful. Um, a really illuminating account of, um, of how we've come into being and, and lasted for for 90 years. I mean, I've, I've got, you were talking about the times and I've, you know, I've, I've got the times here that you were talking about. And it is amazing that the, the letter to the editor was actually, you know, the main up there. It's the main, you can, you know, nobody can read it there. It's the main letter to the times, which is amazing. And, it, and it's 700 words long. So it was a, it was a, a staggering achievement really of the Dean uh, to get that sort of coverage. Uh, plus, as you, as you mentioned, uh, Tom, uh, the photograph uh, that was taken. So now, um, Lucy is normally the moderator uh, for this um, because she's controlling um, the events, but she's, ha she's had to do all sorts of parental things, which she wasn't expecting to do uh, earlier in the day, but they, they're COVID related and all sorts of other things. So um, I just, uh, I, I think it's a free for all really. Uh, if you've got questions for Tom, perhaps you could, uh, uh put your hand up and, and i'll say go and you can go um, uh, do your question and i'll see if i can see uh, see who's who's wanting to ask something is that mara claire wanting to ask something no it's not no uh anybody got any questions for, for tom anybody got any comments about uh, about the friends and uh and are we, how are we doing? <laughs> um, uh, well, I think everybody seems to be happy, um, uh, Tom. Uh, what I might actually just add, you were talking about the Broderers. We've recently, um, because I, I got to know the master of the worship, Worshipful Company of Broderers, I asked him if he could support our Broderers. And um, I hope I'm not, out, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be saying this, but um, they've actually given us another £3,000 and possibly more to come for special projects, which is, uh, which is great. Um, and of course, we do have our annual lecture given this year, I think it's September the 23rd, Tom put me right, um, Tracy Chevalier, um, who, who wrote you know, the, uh, the book, A Single Thread, um, all about broderers and so on. So we're looking forward to that. So anyway, if we haven't, uh, you're probably all wanting to get away for football, are you? Um, if, if nobody's got any, any, any comments or, or questions for Tom, um, we'll, we'll wind it oh, up. Hang on, we've got a question. Ah, where, where are we? Under chat. Right, here we go. Under chat. Uh, how is Winchester doing to, today in relation to other cathedrals, Tom? Well, um, it's interesting, I, I think, um, an answer Bruce, Lucy and I could all look So we all have a keep an eye on other cathedrals. Um, to be honest, during the period of from March last year till, till the present time, an awful lot of cathedral friends just shut up shop. Um, they stopped operating. Um, 
and there's very little evidence that they have reached reached out as good friends to their members. Um, and some of them of more great recent times have sort of had Zoom talks and, and small events. Um, but they, they, they do, some of them do appear to have struggled to keep going during the, 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 the pandemic. Whereas um, we, the trustees of the Friends took the view that when do you need friends? You need friends when there's trouble. So we, we decided that we would you know, put on events, keep in touch with people, and that seems to have worked um, uh, very well. And, uh, and we've kept a very loyal group of members. Uh, it's very hard um, how, how to uh, absolutely compare, but that seems to be the general, the general position. A lot, of, a lot of the friends associations have rather struggled over recent, um, over the recent 18, 15, 18 months. I think Tom, it's worth adding too that um, the the events we've put on, where yeah. other cathedrals have closed down, I, Lucy added up the number of people who who attended these events, and, and I think the total is something just yeah. under under three thousand. So it, it, it really is quite amazing. And, and Lucy was recognized in the uh, awards from the mayor of Winchester quite rightly because um, she's a paid member of staff. And I'm glad she's not listening. She, she is a paid member of staff, but she worked hours and hours and hours beyond anything we pay her for mm. to put these uh, events on. And they've been, well, wonderfully successful, really. Um, and, and, and very interesting. We've been very lucky. David Rymel was with us uh, to, to have people like David Rymel uh, giving us these lectures and, and they've been abs absolutely uh, and of course Tom uh, uh, they've been absolutely staggeringly uh, interesting. The other point is about the membership of, of, um, of friends in, in cathedrals. I rang around a number of uh, cathedral friends offices two or three years ago uh, to find out that um, we all had around about 3,000 members and when I looked up, um, I've got it in my bookshelf there, Fred Busby's um, history of Winchester Cathedral in, uh, in, in um, 1979, mm. he was talking about the membership there and it was around 3,000. So it, um, we lose a lot, we lose a lot every year, um, because we do, but we gain a lot as well. And I think actually we've gained more this year than, than we've lost happily. Um, mm. So, but we are still around 3,000, which is a pretty good number. Um, to be supporting the cathedral. And I have to say, the friends are wonderful in their support. Whenever we mount any sort of um, appeal, uh, the friends do, 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 they are absolutely marvellous. You are absolutely marvellous. So I, there's, there's someone called Jenny Watson's asked a question um, from the other side of the wall in my case saying, what's happening on Saturday and how does the service compare with 90 years ago? So I'm, I, Bruce and I will jointly answer this. He doesn't know that, but he, we will. Um, what I found when I read the Hampshire Chronicle and the Winchester Diocesan Chronicle for 9 July 1931 is it set out what the service was on St. Swithin's Day, 15th of July, 1931. Um, and it set out with a certain type of procession and the certain type of creed and that talked about the structure of the service and the hymns and, and things like that. Now, um, Bruce and, and uh, Ken and Andy Trenier, our presenter, uh, picked this up and have run with it. So Bruce, maybe you could tell us uh, what's happening on Saturday because it really is a throwback to 1931. Yeah, well, well, right, we're gonna start with the procession, all banners flying and everything else um, and lots of people in the procession um, Lord Lieutenant, uh, Mayor of Winchester, clergy, uh, trustees, uh, choir, and so on. We're gonna go march up the nave. We're gonna go straight over the dais into the choir. We're gonna go through the choir. We're gonna turn sharp right past Bishop Andrews uh, and the cathedral, and then do a sharp left towards the Swithin Shrine, where I will do what we normally do is lay a posy of flowers um, just by the shrine. The choir is singing um, all the time, the Athanasian Creed. The choir will stop for a moment there while we do do the um, laying of the wreath. We will then start processing again down the stairs, through the north transit, down the north aisle, towards the door which opens out of the cathedral uh, where St. Swithin's grave is. 
I will go with Canon Andy there. Well, I'll put another posy of flowers on his grave. We normally do one or the other, um, but we're going to do both this time because it's the 90th anniversary. We'll then come back in and at the, uh, we'll go reform, as it were, by the West End, process up the, uh, up the nave again, take our places, and then carry on with the service. The service does include, though, um, and I hope you're not too critical of it uh, when you see it, but we've, we've, th there is a long prayer which acknowledges virtually everybody who's had anything to do with the cathedral uh, over 900 and so years. Um, what Canon Andy and I have done is gone to various parts of the cathedral and outside, including Dean Garnier Garden, and voiced that prayer um, together um, at different places. Uh, Andy, <clears throat> then we filmed all these sections. It took us two hours or more. Um, Andy uh, took it home, took it all home, and edited it, uh, edited it together. So there is a sort of, um, I don't know, nine minute film, if you like, of us doing that as part of the service. So if you're in the congregation, you can follow it on the screens. But for the many, many people we hope are going to be online, it will look, it will help them, we hope, to appreciate the service because it won't be a, <clears throat> a sort of lengthy um, monologue, if you like. Uh, it, it, it's something else. Then we've got um, the Te Deum, we've got an anthem, we've got a sermon from the Dean. The Dean, as our president, um, we thought it absolutely right that, that we normally <clears throat> invite somebody else to come to the service to give us the sermon, but we thought it absolutely right to invite the Dean. She's delighted to do it, so she is uh, giving us the sermon, as indeed Dean Selwyn did um, in the first, uh, the first service of its kind for the Friends in, in 1931. Um, does that give you an idea of what's happening? Uh, I think we're going to fly by the seat of our pants, actually. Um, <laughs> but, we're, but we've had some fun and we just jolly well hope you're going to join us either online or in person. Any comments? <laughs> uh, there are some questions here. How the numbers of WC Friends changed over the last 20 years? Um, I can't really answer that. Can you, Tom? Um, it's it's uh, it's around flat lined, around three thousand. Yeah, it's uh, as I said. You know, the three thousand is the magic number. I mean, we'd love to have more. People say, "Well, well, are you trying to get younger people?" Well, you know, I've been a member for fifty years. It's my fiftieth anniversary as a as a member of the friend. So I joined. Uh, I've got to give my age away. Um, when I, joined, I joined when uh, I was in my, I was 30. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, perhaps I was a bit, a bit strained, really. But people of that age do join. But it's mostly, mostly people who are a little bit older who have begun to appreciate the cathedral and quite often want to give um, not only um, their own support, but fund as well. And, you know, that's the nature, I think, of Friends organisation throughout the country, really. I'm very proud, actually, to be chairman. Um, I, I, I don't hesitate to say. And, and, you know, being a member for all those years. And I was on the council in the, in the 1980s, too. Um, it, it, it's a wonderful, <clears throat> for me, a wonderful organisation. And I can't... I can't think of a group of people that, that I would want to mix with more. Uh, they're wonderful. Um, that's probably the end, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, anybody, let's let you go. There's football on soon. Um, Tom, that was great. Has anybody else got anything to say? Um, once again, I'll repeat, we'd love to see you on, on Saturday. Um, if not, see you for, for these events and whatever. Uh, thanks for being members. I uh, hope you have a good football if you're watching it. Um, have a good weekend and all the rest of it. So, thanks, Tom. Good night, Thank everybody. Where's he? In the aisle.